Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Canola Producers Commission, SAS Canola, and Manitoba Canola Girl. So today we are joined by Ken Pantek and we want to talk about boron. Uh, first, let's just start with what is the role of boron in a plant, in a canola plant specifically? Yes. Well, boron, like uh, many of the other micronutrients, are essential nutrients for, for all crop production. And uh, canola will be a little bit more sensitive to boron de deficiencies and similar alfalfa is as well, as we've identified uh, uh, some fields in Western Canada that can, in fact, be boron deficient. Uh, so it's an essential nutrient for, um, uh, for high-yielding canola to make sure that the, each flower that uh, does open and pollinate, that we have good seed formation and uh, a good pod filling. Uh, what does deficiency look like? Uh, boron is, is very interesting uh, uh, micronutrient to look at. It has symptomology that is very, very similar to that of sulfur. And in fact, if you look at, uh, uh, and we will a little bit later, but you probably couldn't tell the difference between a boron deficient uh, plant and a sulfur deficient plant because the symptomology is very, very similar. Most of the symptoms appear on the newest uh, um, leaves of the plant because boron is not translocated very well within the plant, neither is sulfur. So the two uh, micronutrients are, or nutrients are very, very similar. Okay, so here's an example of sulfur deficiency and, and you'll see a little bit of yellow mottling in the leaves. The cupping of the leaves, and this is sulfur deficiency. You look at the boron deficient plant and the same thing is happening. You see the mottling of the leaves, ignore the purpling because this was just uh, uh, an, an environmental uh, effect when we carried the plants in when it was minus 20. But the model, yellow mottling in the leaf is, is characteristic of uh, uh, early symptom of uh, boron deficiency. As the plant starts to bolt, you'll notice that the um, uh, flowering stalk does not uh, elongate. It, it, it short as stays compacted. The internodes are very short, uh, almost like a mistletoe effect. And when it does try to flower, the flowers are distorted and, uh, and pale yellow color, which is the same symptom as uh, sulfur. So the two could be confused. Uh, boron deficiencies are more rare under Western Canadian conditions than sulfur deficiency, but we do find some fields. And within the last couple of years, we did find a whole field of canola uh, near Yorkton that was on a thick black soil, but underneath the uh, topsoil was pure sand, and this was under high rainfall conditions. Boron is mobile in the soil, and the, and the boron from the uh, decomposing organic matter had been leached below the rooting zone of the canola. So in that particular field, we saw a lot of stunted canola trying to flower, but it wasn't flowering. And when the agrologist did identify it, they applied uh, 0.3 of a pound of uh, liquid boron, uh, foliar applied, and within a couple of days, the, the crop started to flower normally. So it is very difficult to find these and require special diagnostics uh, uh, to identify them properly. And they could be easily confused with sulfur deficiency. So how do you tell the difference? Uh, the main thing is uh, if you've got uh, a field, and these will occur in patches in field, never the whole field, you could do a tissue plus uh, soil test from the good area and the bad area and send these away to the lab, um, and that is a comparative uh, uh, test. It'll give you a quick answer uh, for uh, boron and also for sulfur, but generally speaking, if you see symptoms like these in patches in the field, the best strategy is to fix it as soon as possible. And, the, and it may uh, be a combination of some sulfur and some boron 
at low rates, foliar applied might be the, the best way to fix the problem because by the time you send your samples away to the lab and come back, you've already uh, expired uh, uh, several days. And several days in terms of maturity of canola and optimum yield it could be costly. So what's the best time to test for it? Should we be testing before we see symptoms or wait until we can see symptoms and test them? Yeah, well, boron uh, detection of boron is m more a, a crop scouting function than it is a soil test function because we use uh, water soluble uh, uh, tests uh, in the, at the labs to test for boron and it could show sufficiency. But the growing season could change, like high rainfall on a coarser textured soil and the boron actually leaks lower. The other time uh, that some re recent research is looking at that you need to focus in on is under stress during flowering. If we have dry conditions during flowering, uh, that's when uh, there may be a temporary boron deficiency because boron uh, needs to be taken up uh, continuously by the crop and is not mobile in the plant. So there have been some uh, situations where uh, a low rate of a fraction of a pound, a quarter of a pound of uh, liquid uh, boron foliar applied at early flower will in fact uh, uh, help reduce that stress on canola and produce more pods and better seed set. Sorry, in your presentation you mentioned that there's a, a very small window of ideal boron. Yes. What is that window? Well, when I refer to the window, I'm referring to the window that Boron is one of the micronutrients that we have to be careful with because you can either uh, be sufficient or toxic. And if you add uh, boron when it's not needed, you can in fact uh, damage the crop a little bit and, and reduce the yield a little bit. But if boron is uh, becoming limited in the plant and, uh, and restricting yield, you add a little boron, you could actually increase the yield. So it's a fine line between sufficiency and toxicity. And, and that's where we have agrologists in the field, and that's, that's a call you have to make. But the key point here is keep your rates low. On soils that are very sandy and low organic matter, because organic matter is the main source of boron and a main source of sulfur as well. If you've got low organic matter soils, um, uh, sandier textured, then maybe those are some of the uh, soils that you want to uh, apply a little bit of boron during the seeding operation, but do not apply it in the seed row because about a pound of boron in the seed row will dramatically reduce the plant stand and the vigor of the, the seedlings, delaying the maturity and in fact, could be even toxic and the plants will not uh, produce yield. So if you're applying boring, boron at seeding, apply lower rates and try to keep it away from the seed row.